I didn't have any experience of term sheets. I didn't have any experience of, uh, of the content of term sheets. And um, it's, it's a, quite a significant jump um, to go from not knowing anything to understanding what um, anti-dilution rights are, all the different ratchet mechanisms, liquidation preferences. And if you really want to get a good deal, you have to know how to, to argue your way through this deal and how to prove um, that you should be getting the deal that is right for you and making sure then that the investors are happy with that. So if, if you're going to go through this process, start, start to become an expert in, uh, in all the components of term sheets, it will really help you. Um, disclosure letter uh, as part of our due diligence. Um, we, um, being a designer, I'm a bit of a taxonomist, so I had filed everything. I had put everything into structure. Um, but there was a lot, of NDA, a lot of NDAs we didn't have in place, a lot of contract agreements that we should have had that we didn't have. So it was a lot of, a lot of work, maybe about um, nine weeks over Christmas and New Year, that was just spent working on this solidly. Um, use Dropbox, really good if you're working in a team, um, share all the, all the documents online, work online together in Google Docs, that really helps us uh, speed up the process so we weren't emailing backwards and forwards, we could just jump into the same document at the same time if we're in different locations. Um, and buy a sheet feed scanner, <laughs> it really helps if you're, if you're scanning documents really quickly. Um, uh, this is from, uh, from Rocky, it, it ain't over till it's over, I'm not a big Rocky fan, but this is a really important uh, line is uh, until that uh, shareholders agreement is signed, it's not over and anything can happen. And um, during our disclosure letter, we found a few, a few nasties, um, became really big challenges. Uh, I managed to overcome those. Uh, and uh, actually, just before we, uh, the day before we were about to sign the shareholders agreement, that's when I asked to tip um, the business school uh, into the round. So we had to do another, another, set, uh, another round on the legals. Um, but anything can happen. So. There you go. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Right, any questions for Justin? I saw it. Yes, gentleman there. Just, uh, can you tell us which business school and on what basis they invested? Uh, I can talk about the, the, uh, the business school. It's uh, CAS Business School. Um, and they have uh, an evergreen fund. Uh, it's called um, CAS Entrepreneurship Fund. No, it's uh, it's actually Peter Cullum, his um, insurance uh, owns an insurance company. Um, it's his money, and the school run it as a, as an evergreen fund. They've, uh, we were their second investment. Um, they uh, one of the criteria is to be um, connected to the school or alumni of the school. Um, one of the guys uh, who we started the fundraising process with, um, he had worked uh, at CAS, so we qualified. He stepped out of our process. Um, and uh, as part of the, uh, the deal, they're sponsoring me to do an EMBA. Um, so um, I qualify. <laughs> mm. Other questions for Justin? Yes, gentlemen, May. You yes, said yes. about scaling, uh, the, the difficulty you found was um, scaling the market? Um, proving the market size. Yes, uh, what, what was the problem? You, you too big, too small? Too but, um, the completely wrong way of, of, of looking at it. Um, it's, uh, it was uh, not having enough experience. So um, instead of proving how many um, startups there are every year in the UK and the US, which is six and a half million, um, what I was trying to, trying to do was prove the, uh, the annual spend on uh, branding, design, and marketing. So it was uh, looking at the wrong way around. Um, it's actually, I think it's six and a half percent of the GDP is spent on, um, on uh, communication, uh, marketing or advertising and branding. Um, but it was just completely the wrong way to look at it. Um, and then f since we've launched our product, um, we have found that one in four of the um, brands being purchased uh, are individuals buying them for themselves. And then that opened a, a huge market for us when we could, when we could prove that. Um, we've had uh, uh, people buy brands from 122 countries. And we're actually, we're still in closed beta. We haven't launched yet. Yes, gentlemen, there. Was there a difference between the amount of money you thought you wanted to start with and the amount you got? And how did you get what you were asking for with how your business plan changed? Mm, that, that, that's a really good question, actually. Um, <clears throat> the guys that I started the, uh, the fundraising process um, were, were kind of, well, we need to raise millions and millions and millions. And um, 
the amount, the, the last slide that we presented in with, with how much we were looking for used to make me absolutely cringe and I, I could really stand up and present the whole investor pitch and then that one I would just wither at the end if I thought this is a ridiculous amount of money to ask for. Um, this problem. I think in the end, um, the VCs will tell you what they're interested in investing. They'll be able to see what you need, the, the run rate um, that you need to have, um, your burn rate, they will get a sense of it very quickly. They see so many businesses, so many business plans, and if, if you're um, focused on technology and you're meeting technology VCs, <clears throat> they will know. Um, and then we went through a very, uh, very strong, a very not, not strong, but um, quite an intense process actually streamlining um, our, our business plan. Um, with the VCs, so um, when we were first presenting uh, our proposition, we had uh, um, a run rate of about six months um, with a million, and now we have, um, with a million and a half, we have um, uh, 18, 18 to 24 months run rate before we need to make, uh, make any sales. So it's a very different model now. And then <clears throat> they, they, were, uh, they were happy to, uh, to invest, and actually, um, I managed to increase the amount that was invested by tipping more more people in the round from what was originally offered and had a better valuation. But valuation, one thing I want to say, valuation isn't everything. Um, it might be if, you, uh, if you're looking at the value of the business, but in terms of what you can take out of it on your exit, the most important thing to look at is liquidation preferences. Any more for any more for...